Hello everyone. In this video, I'll discuss about one of non-collusive models of oligopoly that is gaining demand curve. Now this model is, is based on few assumptions. Uh, first of all, there is an established market price or the prevailing market price uh, which, uh, for which all the sellers are satisfied and they charge the same price. But if one firm raises its price in an attempt to have more uh, market revenue, uh, then other firms would not follow that. But if one firm decreases its price uh, to gain more sales or more uh, profit, all the other firms will follow this strategy, which means that lowering the price is not going to, going to benefit the firm as well as increasing the price is not going to benefit the firm. So that's why we see more of the price rigidity, stability in case of oligopoly. Now let's talk about this demand curve. We can see two different types of demand curves. Uh, before kink, uh, kink uh, in this demand curve, we can see it's the elastic one. And after this kink, we can see it's the inelastic one. Now, what is the logic behind elastic demand curve? That if any firm raises its price above P1, the rest of the firms are not going to follow that. It means that firm is going to have a lot of decrease in their demand. But after uh, below this uh, P1, if any firm decreases the price, which means if they charge at this level, it means a lot of other firms would also follow the same strategy. So that firm uh, which has decreased the prices, it is not going to uh, benefit them because rest of the firms would also jump into the same strategy and they will also reduce the price. So that's why we have two different types of demand curve. One is this elastic one, the other one is this inelastic one. And because of this, that we have two types of demand curves at this kink, we have two different marginal revenue curves. With this elastic demand curve, this is the marginal revenue curve. And with this inelastic demand curve, this is the marginal revenue curve. So you can see the uh, discontinuity of this uh, marginal revenue curve from B to C. And this is the exact same point we have the king in this demand curve. So whenever this MC cuts MR at this discontinuous part, you can see that this is the same price P1 will be charged by the firms in the industry. And this is the quantity Q1, which is provided by the industry uh, to the customers. As long as this MC curve cuts MR in this discontinuous part, even if MC goes up to this side, or maybe it goes below on this side, uh, but still it's the same price and quantity. But if MC cuts on this part, or maybe on this part on MR, then we can have different um, price and output determination for the oligopoly industry. There are a few limitations of this king demand curve. First of all, this is the initial level of price, which we assume that uh, there will be more stability on this level of price. How this level of price is being decided by the industry, there is no uh, clarification, there is no rationale behind that, that how this level of price is decided, uh, which is uh, which is going to be sticky for the, for the other firms or rigidity for the firms to follow that. Secondly, uh, about the gap of this uh, marginal revenue curve, it might reduce and we might see this MC cutting MR in some other part, not the discontinuous part. And uh, thirdly, if because of the higher cost of production, one firm increases its price, uh, then there is a possibility that other firms would also follow that firm because they would also face the same higher cost of production. I hope you understand this uh, King demand curve or model of the oligopoly. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Happy learning.